Okay, welcome to lesson 4.4, .4, Circles and Area. This time we're going to do the area of a triangle. So in this lesson, students will review the types of triangles and relate how parallelogram is related to a triangle. And then we're going to get you to develop a formula that you can use to find the area of any triangle that you encounter. So on the supplied pieces of grid paper, um, you should find a piece of paper which looks very similar to this. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw a parallelogram on the grid paper. Now, it doesn't matter basically what size it is. I want you basically to try and make one six by four. So, oh, sorry, I guess it does matter. I want you to draw this one. Now, if you can't draw it because you don't have grid paper, then you can just watch as I go through this particular exercise with this one because it's already drawn for me. So, what I'm going to do here is once you've got this drawn, what I'd like you to do is to cut it out. Cut out the, um, the whole parallelogram itself. Okay. Now that you got that done, what I'd like you to do is take and draw a line from corner to corner, just like I've done right here. And I'd like you to cut along that dotted line so that you get two triangles. So when you take these two triangles and put the this one right here, there's your first one. You take the blue one and you put it on top of the red one, you should see that there is a perfect match. Okay, you have to twi you have to flip them a little bit, but they should line up perfectly. And as long as you made a perfect parallelogram, you will have two perfectly equal triangles. Okay, that means that if I want to find the area of this particular parallelogram, right? Um, sorry, sorry, no, no, to the back up again. If I want to find the area of this triangle here, I have to imagine for a second that it's a parallelogram. Take the base, the height, just like we did for our parallelogram, and I calculate the whole thing, right? And then when that's done, I divide it in half, and I will have the triangle, the area that I'm trying to find. So what does this look like again? Well, here we go. Here is a triangle that has a base and an area. If you take a look at this, you can see that my area, sorry, my base is... One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my base. It is six. And I'm going to use centimeters. All right. Um, if I have a height, it's right here. And this height is four centimeters. One, two, three, four. All right. So if I want to find the area of that triangle right here, just the triangle part, I'm going to imagine for a second that it's a parallelogram. Now remember from our last lesson, the area of a parallelogram is the base times the height. Now, that will get me the whole shape. What I want is just this shape here. Well, since we just proved a second ago with the cutout that if I cut this parallelogram in half, each one of them is exactly equal, to find the area of only one, I need to divide it by two. So how does that look like when we do the formula? Well, I'm not expecting you to work, use the words base and height. We shorten it up. It's going to be B, H, base times height, over 2. Again, we're get, remember, we're getting away from doing stuff like this, because is this base times height, or is it BXH with three variables? Since there's no way of telling, we eliminate this, and we just put B and H side by side. All right, so let's go to our next question. Here's 4 by 6. Here's a parallelogram. I want to find the area of the parallel or of the triangle A. So I only want the area of that triangle. So if I was doing this, I'm going to treat it like a parallelogram for a second. Okay? So the very area of the parallelogram is the base times height. Here's my base, which is four. My height right here is six. So that's six times or sorry, four times six, which is twenty-four centimeters squared. Okay. But I want A. I want just the triangle. Okay, so if I only want the triangle, then I'm going to take this 24 and just divide it by 2. So there, sorry, that should be squared. There is my area of my triangle. Okay, so how do I do this in sort of one step? Well, rather than taking and thinking of the parallelogram being base times height and then dividing it by 2, let's put it all together in one formula. Here we go. Area is equal to base times height all over 2. So the base times height, and our base, if you look up here, my base was 4, my height was 6, 
Now, 4 times 6 is 24. And divide 24 by 2, you get 12. Okay? Now, here's where we have a little bit of a caution on calculators. Okay? Some of your calculators do order of operations, and some of them don't. So, let's take a look at my calculator here. I want to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's my calculator. I've got uh, 4 times 6 divided by 2. So, 4 times 6 divided by 2 equals 12. This particular calculator does order of operations for you. Some of them don't, okay? So you have to be careful. Right? Um, if you don't do order of operations, you get messed up later. Okay, now the reason I bring this to your attention is that um, you need to learn your calculator uh, and make sure that there's, uh, you know, that you understand how it works. Uh, this one here is really kind of nice because it, the order of operation doesn't really come into effect it very much, but when we add adding and subtracting in there, you have to make sure that you, whenever you do the top of it, 4 times 6, you want to press equals in order to get the 4 times 6 to actually work. So uh, you're going to go 4 times 6, you press equals, turn it into a 24, and then divide it by 2, and you'll get 12, okay? Now, you want to keep that in mind and make sure that every time you do calculations for, for stuff like this, that it works, that you actually do that, okay? Because you'll find that in certain circumstances, other circumstances, not knowing if your calculator does order of operations can seriously mess you up, okay? So, let's take and go on to our next example. Here we go. Now I don't have the parallelogram anymore. I've gone straight to the triangle. Now remember that the parallelogram is very similar. It's still there, but it's kind of like invisible, right? Here's your parallelogram if you want to think about it. It's right there. All right? But we're not going to draw it in there, but it's still kind of there. But the base and the height are still part of this drawing. So I want to find the area of this triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have to find out what the base is. So in this case, I'm going to take and either bubble jump or count the squares. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so my base is 6 centimeters. This is the centimeter grid. And height is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So my height is 8 centimeters. So to calculate the area of this triangle, you write down the formula. Area is equal to BH over 2. The base is 6. The height is 8. You do your formula, you do your substitution, and then 6 times 8 is 48, and 48 divided by 2 is 24. Now, I'm not going to mark this middle step here. I'm going to go right straight to 24. It always works out to be formula, substitution, and answer. So this question would be worth three marks. Remember that you have to include centimeters squared. If you just put in centimeters, or if you don't put any unit at all in, then you're going to lose half a mark. Okay, so here's another one that you can do. I'd like you to take a look at this one, but before you get all mixed up and go, well, Mr. Reedy, where's the base, where's the height? Remember that this is your base here this time. The whole diagram is just on its side. Your base is there. Here is your height right there. This time the height's on the inside. So if you have to, think about it like this, and then you can just sort of look at it from the side and uh, see if I can grab and do a, lot, a grouping here. And just turn it, right? Obviously, you can't do that with the grid. But sit, turn your page so you look at it from that side. Okay? So I'd like you to uh, finish this question, please, without my help. So pause it off and try it. Okay, welcome back. So we needed to find the base. In this case, the base was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's your base, 9. The height is how tall it is. So in this case, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So your height is 6. This is a centimeter grid again. So this is 6 centimeters, and this is 9 centimeters. So how do you calculate the area, the area of this? Well, the base is 6. So, sorry, the base is 9, sorry. You put a 9 here. The height is 6. Okay, and then, of course, 9 times 6 is 54. And 54 divided by 2 is 27. So how am I going to mark this? Formula, substitution, and answer. Three marks. You'll get sick and tired of me saying that. Okay, turn the question, turn the page. Now I'm not providing you with the diagram. 
Now what I'm doing is I'm providing you just with the numbers and telling you what they are. So this time it includes decimals, but it, since you're using a calculator, it shouldn't cause you any difficulty. So use your calculator to solve it. Remember, you have to put in the formula, the substitution, and the answer. And I'd like you to pause the recording and do that question. Okay, so here we go. The base is told 2.1, so that goes right here. The height is told, that's 3.4. So now 2.1 multiplied by 3.4 is 7.14 okay and of course 7.14 divided by 2 is 3.57 okay so there is your answer 3.57 meters squared remember it's meters this time not centimeters I get that from in the question okay so, how do you go backwards? Well, going backwards is complicated. All right. So, it says here, what is the base when you're given the height and the area, but, but not the base. So, you can think about it this way. There's two ways of looking at it. Base times height divided by 2, you can put all the information in that you're given. I know that the area is 24. I know that the height is 6. The base I don't know. Okay. And this is where you get to do a little bit of detective work. Okay. You have to tell yourself or ask yourself, okay, what does the base have to be so that when I multiply it by 6 and then divide it by 2, I get 24? Well, there is a little bit of a cheat here. You can think of it as being 2, 6 divided by 2, and that's a 3. And now I'll take a look at it. It might be a little bit easier for you to do. What do you multiply by 3? to get 24. Well, in this case, that's an 8. So there's our height, or sorry, our base. If you want to, you can rearrange the formula. Now, rearranging the formula is not as easy as it looks, okay? What you end up getting is this, all right? Base is equal to 2a divided by h. Okay, now, I'm not going to give you this formula, so if you want to, you can memorize it, but it's up to you. I want you to start thinking about it this way over here. So how does this work out? Once you have the formula, you just put in the numbers. The area is 24. The height is given to us as a 6. So what's on your calculator? You go 2 times 24 divided by 6. And, of course, that means that your base is going to be 8 also. Okay, and, of course, our units are... Uh, I guess we're meters, not centimeters in this case, so it's meters. So this one here should be meters, 8 centimeters. All right, so I've given you two examples here on how to do it. Pause the recording. I'd like you to try the, this one right here. The height of a triangle has an area of 48 and a base of 16. I'd like you to try that one. So pause the recording and try it, please. Okay, now that you're back, we have two ways of doing this. The easiest way, or probably, I don't know if it's the easiest for you, but... Um, take a look at your formula. Area is base times height divided by 2. We know this is 48. We know that our base is 16. We don't know what our height is. And we do know that there's a 2 under there. So now, 16 divided by 2 is an 8. So we have 8h is equal to 48. So the question is, what do you multiply h by, so, sorry, 8 by, to get 48? Well, if you know your time tables, 8 times 6 is equal to 48. That means h has to be 6. And of course we are working with meters, so there's your unit. All right, So there you go. You can try it the other way with the full formula if you want, but this is the way I'm looking for you to figure it out. Okay, let's go to a more complicated question here. Each triangle is congruent, which means they're identical. So what I'm talking about here is this triangle right here, and this triangle right here, and this triangle right here, and finally, the last one, they are all identical. All right? So there's two methods of solving this question. All right? Method one is, um, well, sorry, actually, first off, the question is, what's the area of one of these triangles? Okay? And it's the one without the lines in it. Well, since they're all identical, the one thing you should have looked at and realized is that this is nothing more than a very large parallelogram. Take a look at this right here. Now, if you go back to your information, 
about parallelograms, you know that the parallelogram is base times height. Okay. Also understand that you have also got four triangles. And the four triangles are basically congruent, which means that you can work with a diet with one of these triangles also if you wanted to to solve it. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to stop and give it a try. See if you can come up with the area of the triangle which has no lines in it, this one right here. All right, see if you can try it. Okay, welcome back. So, method one, what are the dimensions of the triangles? Well, in this case, the triangles, each, I say all the triangles, this one here, this one here, and this one here, they all have the same height, and that's three centimeters. Okay, so the height is three centimeters. So I guess I got that reading there. Okay, now, the base. Well, take a look at this. I know from here to here is 10, and that's one, two bases. So that means one of these bases is 5 centimeters, and so is the other one. So I know that this is 5 centimeters. Well, if I know that the base is 5 and the height is 3, I can find the area of this triangle, and it's identical to this one because they are congruent. Right up here, it says they are identical. So find one, and that's the same area as all of them. So doing that, area is equal to base times height divided by 2. There's my formula, check mark. Area is equal to base, which is 5. The height, which is 3, all divided by 2. Substitution, check mark. And of course, 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. And we are working in units, which are, here it tells you, right there, centimeters. So I am in 7.5 centimeters squared. Okay? So that is one way of doing it. Trying to find the information for one triangle, and then basically figuring out uh, by, you know, by, by just what the base and the height is, what the actual dimensions are. The second way of doing this is to treat it like a huge parallelogram. And since there's four triangles in here which are identical, uh, one of the triangles can be found, the area of the one triangle can be found by dividing by 4. So I need to find the area of this parallelogram and divide it by 4. Well, the base of this parallelogram is 10. The height of this parallelogram is 3. So, all right, since there are four equal triangles, the area of one triangle, uh, sorry, the area of one triangle is one quarter the area of the whole parallelogram. So the, bar the parallelogram, the base was 10. The height was 3. 10 times 3 is 30. And 30 divided by 4, 7.5. So there is another way of doing the question. All right? You're going to encounter one of these on your quizzes. So what I'd like you to do is try the assignment. And we will talk to you if you have difficulty. If not, go back and watch the video again. If you have any questions, come and see me.